It's um, called the raccoon roundworm, and it's acquired from raccoon raccoons. So the raccoons carry it. Um, the adults can get infected by eating rodents or birds or um, small mammals. Um, the young raccoons can get it from just grooming and normal activity. And then they get it in their gastrointestinal tract and they excrete it in their stools. And they can excrete huge quantities of this in their stool, so millions, millions of eggs in their stool. And then the parasite itself is quite hardy, so it has four layers to its shell, so it survives in the environment for a prolonged period of time. So any area that's contaminated with raccoon feces can stay contaminated for months to years, and then if people come into that environment, if they get something on their hands and put it in their mouth, they can get infected. It's not common to cause disease in humans. Um, there's been less than 25 reported cases um, in the U.S. And in California, over the past um, 20 years, there's been three reported cases. So it's not, it's not very common, although a lot of people get infected and they clear the infection and they're asymptomatic. So it's a really um, rare cause of actual disease. It's not a common infection, but children should be supervised at all times um, when they're outside. Obviously, if there's any um, evidence of raccoon activity um, in the area, you don't want children just goofing around and playing there. That's going to be a higher risk activity. Raccoons um, do um, go to the bathroom um, in groups. That's why it's called raccoon latrines. Um, they do it in wooded areas, so if there's tree stumps, if there's um, wood piles, they seem to uh, be attracted to those areas for um, uh, going to the bathroom so avoiding those areas is important and then obviously supervising children and making sure that they have good hygiene is important.